this is dr saad in front of you and today we will be discussing two topics in this lecture number one is the esophageal varices and the second one is the barrett's esophagus so first of all moving on with the esophageal varices as its name indicates varices means dilatation of the veins and as it is in the esophageal region so that's why it is called as the esophageal varices now as we all know that the most of the venous drainage of the GIT is uh, through the portal vein into the liver and we have also studied in the pharmacology that the drugs that are absorbed from the GIT they first passes towards the liver through the portal vein so this is called as the first pass effect clear now first of all before starting uh, this varices uh, I would like to explain uh, about the portal vein something about the portal vein for suppose this is the liver just suppose it it is a liver and here we have the pancreas yeah this is the liver and this is the pancreas now and here suppose that we have the whole our GIT this is the esophagus and the stomach and small intestine large intestine all that clear so the drainage of the GIT is through the superior mesenteric vein inferior mesenteric vein so these veins the superior mesenteric the inferior mesenteric the splenic vein they join together at the posterior aspect of the head of the pancreas to form the portal vein here the portal vein is formed and it moves into the liver divided into the right and the left port, uh, branches supplying to the right and the left lobe of the liver so this is the portal vein clear this is the portal vein formation now what happens that due to any reason due to any reason when this portal vein is obstructed or suppose here it is obstructed the blood it is drained backward it flows backward into the veins and this backflow of the blood causes the accumulation of the blood into these veins and when the blood accumulates into the veins that causes the veins to dilate resulting in the varices and if this varices occur in this region in the esophagus due to the portal hypertension simply the obstruction of this portal vein causes the portal hypertension we call it as a portal hypertension and this portal hypertension if uh, causes the drainage mean cause the dilatation of the veins and if dilatation occur in this region in the esophageal region it is called as the esophageal varices is that clear now whenever there is a portal hypertension development so there is a compensatory mechanism in our body that tries to overcome or prevent the portal hypertension how it is for suppose that we have here the inferior vena cava that is going from the posterior aspect what happens that compensatory mechanism what is the compensatory mechanism that whenever the portal hypertension develops means there is a high pressure of the blood in the portal vein due to the obstruction what happens that there are certain collateral channels starts to develop this like these channels and they are called as the porto cable shunts because they are formed between the portal vein and the inferior vena cava that's why they are called as the porto cable shunts and from here this shunt these shunt helps the blood from the portal vein to drain into the inferior vena cava and then to the heart so this uh, shunt they these helps to overcome the portal hypertension but they also means overcome to a such an extent not that much to a limited extent clear now if you are moving on towards the uh, clinical features of this disease esophageal varices clinical features so simply uh, you can say that most of the you can say 50 percent of the patients which cirrhotic patients they develop esophageal varices why because when the, there is a liver disease this cirrhosis occur so the portal vein obstruction also occur which causes the portal hypertension this portal hypertension results in the esophageal or varices or you can say if it is in the esophagus called as the esophageal varices if it is in the stomach called as the gastric varices if it is in the rectum called as the rectal varices so 
and this is the varices. So in the esophagus, what is the esophageal varices? Now, in uh, 25 to 40 percent of the patients uh, um, have the variceal bleeding. Clear? Yeah. So, uh, moving on towards the after clinical features, we are moving on towards the risk factors for the hemorrhage. What are the risk factors? Number first risk factor is the large veins. Large veins. Then we have the previous bleeding. And then we also have the especially liver disease. Any liver disease that causes the uh, development of the portal hypertension. So these are the risk factors. Now how we will be treating this disease? How this disease is treated? Treatment. Treatment involves number one, you can say there is a medical treatment. Very easy, you can understand it. How? By giving a vasoconstrictive agent. When they give vasoconstrictive agent, the, obviously it will cause the uh, dilated veins to constrict and returns to their normal position. This is a medical treatment. We can treat it endoscopically. Endoscopically how? By a method that is called as the sclerotherapy. Now, what is this sclerotherapy? In this simple, in a single line, what is it? It is the injection of a thrombotic agent. In what happens in this uh, means in, in this process? Uh, the doctors they directly inject a thrombotic agent into the vein in this for example in this way which causes the scar formation in the vein and when there is a scar formation in this vein for example this vein is uh, varized like this here varices is developed here you will be injecting the thrombotic agent causes the scar formation so the blood that has to drain from this vein it will be reroute and move through the healthier vein this is the benefit of the sclerotherapy or we have the simple another procedure that is the variceal ligation simple clear so this is the treatment of this disease now uh, morphology features you can say that there is a morphology that if the rupture occur variceal rupture after variceal rupture you can observe necrosis in the patient or you can also observe the ulceration clear so this is all about the esophageal varices and uh, the esophageal varices definition i told you about the clinical features the risk factors for the hemorrhage the treatment of the esophageal varices and the morphology clear now moving on towards our next uh, uh, topic that is the barrett's esophagus i am raising this and I will be writing here explaining you the Barrett's esophagus. Now, here is first of all, what is Barrett's esophagus? Barrett's esophagus is the change in epithelium, or you can say the metaplasia of the epithelium of the esophagus. Clear? Yeah? So you can say metaplasia of the epithelium of the esophagus. Normal epithelium or normal mucosa of the esophagus is the squamous mucosa and change of the squamous mucosa into the columnar mucosa of the esophagus is called as the Barrett's esophagus. And if you are saying that what is the cause of Barrett's esophagus, if someone asks you that what is the cause of Barrett's esophagus, simple, the cause is GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease or the you can say reflux esophagitis clear now we have studied in the complication of the reflux esophagitis that there are four complications of reflux esophagitis or GERD that are number one is the ulceration hematemesis melena and fourth and the last one that develops chronically is the Barrett's esophagus clear so that's why this is the cause is the GERD. Now, this Barrett's esophagus, it also can result in the esophageal adenocarcinoma. Clear? 
This can also result in the uh, esophageal adenocarcinoma. Now, we have the clinical features of this disease. The clinical features of this disease, they are similar, we can say GERD-like symptoms develop. And what are GERD-like symptoms? Simple. They are the, you can say chest pain, dysphagia, heartburn, regurgitation. So these are the main symptoms of the GERD that also develop in the Barrett's esophagus. Now, after this, we have the classification. We have classified this Barrett's esophagus into two types. Number one is the short segment Barrett esophagus. And number second is the long segment Barrett esophagus. Now, what is short segment Barrett esophagus? That if the area of the metaplasia, if that area is less than 3 cm, clear? If it is less than 3 cm, it is called as the short segment Barrett esophagus. And if the uh, it is equal to or greater than equal to or greater than 3 cm if the area of metaplasia is equal to or greater than 3 cm it is called as the long segment Barrett esophagus clear now moving on towards the morphologic features of this disease morphology morphology is you can say red velvety appearance of the mucosa the normal mucosa of the esophagus it is squamous and it is pale in color pale is the squamous but as this epithelium changes into the columnar type epithelium it becomes light brown in color this is the morphology feature light brown is the columnar after metaplasia when columnar epithelium appears it appears as a light brown in color now this is the morphology now if we are moving on towards the microscopic features of this disease what are the microscopic features number first microscopic feature it is you can say the nuclear hyperchromasia Clear? due to which the nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is increased normal ratio is 1 ratio 4 but if this ratio may increase to 1 ratio 1 we can say it may be atypical mitosis occur clear so these are certain microscopic features and microscopically we can also see intestinal metaplasia how we diagnose this intestinal metaplasia because uh, if microscopically we see it we will be observing many goblet cells and they are the feature of the intestine that's why we have termed it as the intestinal metaplasia these are the due to the presence of the goblet cells clear now and they can be stained by the H and E stain clear so this is the microscopic features of the Barrett esophagus. Simply, I can also draw a diagram here. So this is esophagus. Clear? This is your stomach. And this is, for example, the lower esophageal sphincter. It is not completely contracted state. It is relaxed. So what happens that the contents of the stomach, if they are continuously, means refluxing backward. Chronically, they are refluxing backward. Chronically, they are refluxing backward. It results in the esophagitis, and uh, chronically, it will be leading to the change in uh, epithelium of the esophagus that results in the Barrett's esophagus. So, uh, now the last uh, last thing that is remaining is the treatment of this disease. What is the treatment? Simple esophagectomy. Ectomy means removal. So you can remove this area of the esophagus or you can say mucosectomy means you can remove the mucosa, the defective mucosa of the esophagus. So uh, these are the, the treatment of this disease 
and with this we have completed our Barrett esophagus and the esophageal varices. In this I told you the cause of uh, Barrett esophagus, the definition, the clinical features and the classification of this Barrett esophagus short and the long segment. Then we have done the morphology features, then the microscopic features and the last thing we have done the treatment of this Barrett's esophagus. Thank you so much. Allah.